this edition of Ask the Doc, I will be covering a common question about what causes groin pulls and strains and often pain in the front part of the hip. Expect to learn, why do pulls and strains happen in the first place? A muscle deep on the middle side of the hip that is a main muscle to experience groin pulls, the job of that deep hip muscle, how does dysfunction in that muscle lead to hip pain, why stretching is a bad idea, how to effectively get this area treated. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Matt Maggio. I am a soft tissue injury treatment expert, specifically for neck, shoulder, sciatica, and hip pain. My focus is on diagnosing and treating adhesion, also known as scar tissue, and reducing inflammation from chronic injuries without the use of drugs, injections, or surgeries, which does lead to a significant increase in overall functioning, flexibility, and long-lasting pain relief. Back at it for Ask the Doc. Just a quick reminder, if you have neck, shoulder, sciatica, or hip issues, and you're struggling to get some real answers as to what is going on, you can submit your questions directly to me. And if my insights can help, I'll be sure to get a video out to you. Why do pulls and strains in the groin happen in the first place? So over time, you know, with repetitive use, maybe an injury, um, lots of things, the muscle gets overworked and it doesn't get enough blood flow and it doesn't get enough oxygen. When this happens, it sends a signal to the brain and says, hey, there's something going on here. There's an injury. So the brain starts to send out this stuff that's like called adhesion, also known as scar tissue. It's like a glue that gets inside the muscle and starts to build up. Over time, that adhesion gets bigger and bigger, and then it makes the muscle weaker and less flexible. So what happens is it usually gets stuck in some area and then either below it or above it, it has to pull harder and harder to do that. And when it does that, it creates a lot of tension, pain, inflammation, even can have some tearing and some minor ripping in there as well. But a lot of times that scar tissue and that adhesion just builds up over time. And then that strain starts to happen. Usually in a healthy muscle, it's not going to end up pulling or having a groin issue. It's going to be when that adhesion gets in there in the first place. So there's a muscle um, on the middle side of the hip um, that's really deep. It's really big. It's actually called the adductor magnus. It's actually one of my favorite muscles. It has just like a really powerful name in there. Its main job really is to drive your hip through space. You know, it basically flexes the hip and it's really big. And you can see in the picture just how much area it actually takes up on that middle part of the thigh. You know, it's actually between the quads and the hamstrings. It's really deep. It's almost right up against the bone. It's so important in basically driving your hip through space. You use it in running, squatting, jumping, walking, pretty much everything. So over time, when that muscle develops a lot of that adhesion, the muscle starts to shorten. It doesn't lengthen quite how it should, because I said earlier, adhesion makes the muscle weaker and less flexible. So essentially what happens is when that muscle gets shorter, the hip kind of dives in a little bit. So the knee might kick in a little bit to take some of that pressure off of there and give the hip a better advantage in moving because it doesn't have full access to that muscle. So which in turn it does is it puts more pressure on muscles on the side of the hip and the front of the hip. So a lot of times when people are having pain, maybe in the front part of the hip or the side, it's really not coming directly from that area. Just because it hurts somewhere doesn't always mean it's the problem. If you had like an accident or, or trauma there, maybe you fell or you got hit on that, I'd expect that area to hurt. But a lot of times in my clinical practice, when I see people that have an area that hurts, but no actual trauma or mechanism of injury, I'm usually thinking it's going to be somewhere else. So a lot of times that adhesion just really pulls that hip in. Your body's just trying to function around it and work around it, but the problem is actually somewhere else. So why is stretching uh, a bad idea? Don't get me wrong, stretching is very useful. Um, unfortunately, people just, you know, whenever something's tight or doesn't feel right, they're like, oh, you just need to stretch more. That's a problem because over time, like I said, that adhesion builds up. So this rubber band would be the muscle that builds up with that adhesion. So if it's stuck here, it's having to pull more. So when you're stretching it, you're really just pulling that adhesion more and more. It's not actually breaking that down and causing that to free up. And a lot of times what happens is the area that's stuck continues to stay more stuck. So you're having to pull there even more. And a big problem is you get a temporary effect where it does feel better. You get a little bit more range of motion. 
but didn't actually fix anything. I always go back to these analogies and like, basically it's almost like the adhesion is like cavity or a plaque that builds up in your teeth. And then stretching is kind of like brushing and flossing. When you have a really bad cavity or a lot of plaque, all the brushing and flossing in the world isn't going to actually fix it. It's actually going to kind of irritate it. Think about that. If you have like a throbbing cavity and you go in there and brush and floss it, it's going to actually make it feel a lot worse. That's what's happening with stretching. Stretching is perfectly fine once you get the tissue healthy. So what I want to demonstrate in this week is how we in our clinics actually get in there and effectively treat this area. It's very precise. It's very focused. So I'm going to link that video up right now. So what you're going to do is back these thumbs up. This is going to allow me to get my depth and my tension. So the first step is I'm going to get my depth by leaning in with my body, just like that. I'm gonna come out just a little bit, and then my tension is going to be rolling my thumbs just like that. That area is loaded up, and then what I'm gonna do is take this other foot and step that back, and I'm gonna go nice and slow and let that come to me. I am not going to slide, I'm just gonna be very precise and let that come through. Sink, we're in, I step this way, and then I lean away like that. And I can really, when it's a really bad area of scar tissue in the adductor, I can lean my body in there and get some of that increased tension. So a couple take homes from the video. You can see it's very slow because it's in a very sensitive area. When we do treat it, people usually say it is a bit uncomfortable, but nothing too bad. If it hurts like hell and you're excruciating pain, you're about to pass out when you're getting it treated, the provider you're seeing is actually just crushing the tissue and they're making it a lot worse. You know, it has to get the right amount of depth, the right amount of tension and go nice and slow. When you get that in there, it actually breaks it down and gets that component where you can break that rubber band apart and break that adhesion down. So that's all I got for you in the video. If you've been dealing with chronic groin poles and hip pain for, I'd say, at least six months, you've seen way too many providers and you're still having issues, then reach out directly to us and set up an injury consultation to get some real answers as to what is going on and get on the path to long lasting pain relief so you can stay the hell away from pain pills, injections, and surgeries that only make things worse. All the information to request a consultation is in our profile or wherever you're consuming this information. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.